appreciate it. Thanks for taking Thank you. What do you, th you think is being covered up? Because it seems like you think there is a cover up, but you think it's negligence or something like that? Well, I, I mean, it, if you work in Washington long enough, you always assume incompetence is the answer. You know, there's the Napoleon quote, you know, never assume malice, assume incompetence. <laughs> yeah. And it's really true. And no, and I think that, you know, I think you can show where, you know, like the, you know, I, I certainly think there's a strong reason to argue that 9 11 didn't have to happen, that there were a lot of dots out there, and it wouldn't have been so hard to connect them, you know. Just the FBI, you have Masawi, the Phoenix memo, the guys living in San Diego. If somebody with but half a brain had just Colleen, connected those dots. Colleen Rowley did connect those dots, and no, then she, Dave, no, 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 Dave Frasca didn't allow her to. to but to that's one dot, that's Masawi. I'm saying True. if somebody in Washington had just taken those three bits of information and gone to the White House and said, we may have a problem here with young Arab men wanting to hijack planes in a terrorist attack, at the same moment the government is supposedly on high alert for a terrorist attack, the world might be a very different place. There was able danger where they were tracking them and they had a CIA, it looks confusing. like they had a CIA controller living next to them in San Diego and Mossad agents living down the street from them in Florida. So that that's a little weird. I think there was there was intelligence agencies who knew, knew about them and so maybe it looks like they were being turned into patsies in many ways. So, but here's my question is because I've already submitted my papers to five federal judges in downtown LA as a citizen of the United States of America about the cover-up of 9-11. I don't assert that the, the administration had anything to do with planning it, but I assert that in the cover-up of it, is that is a treasonous act under Article 3, Section 3 of the Constitution. Well, it, would, it would all be a treasonous act, yeah? Right, if they're covering it up, if right? If they do it in the first place and then they cover it up. Well, even if they're just covering it up, that's what I'm saying. Even if they're just covering up some Saudi influence, or even if they're covering up, I would say, negligence in very high places and you see that everyone who supposedly failed on that day was promoted so that makes people think well maybe they were they were successful in what they did so that's what i'm saying is that even maybe at the very lowest level of a cover-up in terms of a negligence of sort that is can be a considered a treasonous act because you're giving aid and comfort to our enemies i wouldn't i wouldn't disagree with that Mr. Do, do you uh, what is your opinion of uh Wiener's book uh tim Wiener's book about the cia oh, it's terrific book. no he's a he's a very fine colleague of mine Right. Yeah. And uh, is, do you have a background in the military? Were you ever in the service? Uh, no, I was I was with ground troops in the first Gulf War as a reporter, and uh, I covered the Pentagon for a while. And uh, no, so I mean I have some background. With which which units in the uh, Gulf War? Remember many? Many for the uh, New York Times. I should remember this. I'm getting old now. I don't for the remember. New York Times. Yeah, we had two. You're not that old yet. <laughs> I feel so it today. One, one other thing, uh, what, what is your uh, feeling about the incongruity between the fact that the Bush administration and the media had already convicted bin Laden in the World Court within 24 to 48 hours after well, the events of 9 11? You, You'll recall the well, President of the United States said for his first thought was that it was Saddam Hussein, not Osama bin Laden. Well, he grabs he Dick Clark and he says, meeting, right? pardon me? That's because he wanted to go after Iraq for his first meeting. Yeah, but I'm just saying it wasn't, the assumption wasn't initially. Yeah. On the part of the president, apparently wasn't initially been lost. Well, well, but other people, on, on right other people were on the news. Other people were on the news. Well, you know, it's we're saying this has been lost. The fact that the FBI said uh, doesn't have 9/11 listed on Bin Laden's most wanted uh, poster because uh, the head of the FBI said there's no hard evidence to connect him to the crime. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> they still think. Oh, wait, wait, I think, but, as I understand that anecdote, that is a press spokesman says we don't have anything on Bin Laden. Any being hard talking. evidence. You know, that may be one press spokesman who probably said something well, dumb. It's still that's not it's, it's no, but it's, that's true. There is no hard person. evidence. There's the, the, there's the, the videotape. There's the videotape, which is, there's a lot of which questions doesn't look around him. And he had previously said it wasn't. And we talked to Michael Schroyer about that. And yeah. He had a viewpoint on it, but. And no Actually, video, his and, viewpoint is that it's real. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, he, he also, said it's been voice matched. And, but Bin yeah. Laden cannot stand down the laws of physics, and, you, and he can't stand down NORAD. <laughs> All right. Are you guys, have you guys had a lot, long conversation with Mike Scheuer? We had a little bit. Yeah, he, I, I, I don't, does he, I, and he's the real thing. I mean, he was obsessed with Osama Bin Laden from very, very early days. He thinks Bin Laden did it. Yeah. He's also and very crazy. Right yeah, but to our question, to Jeremy's question, whether because of compartmentalization in the intelligence community and undercover operations, that some other unit or some other operation that he actually was not aware of could have happened, and he said, not in our country. Right. That was his answer. His implication was that it's possible 
that another agent, an agency or a unit from another agency could have been in somehow inserting themselves into this process. I thought that was a very interesting comment. Anything's him. possible. Yes, and, it is. But to have the guy for the CIA in charge of uh, uh, Michael Sawyer, by the way, said a lot of interesting things. You he sure did. He said, uh, first of all, he selected Houston as the best target for the terrorists. Um, and he gave all the reasons why. <laughs> that was a little weird. Okay. For the next target? Yeah. 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 No, se se second, um, he said that uh, uh, extra constitutional measures might be necessary, which are basically unconstitutional measures, which are basically. At that point. Yeah, right, but he's he's just, saying that that it's okay. He's talking about real ID card, retina scanning, all this kind of stuff. Saying that it's you know it's it's appropriate uh, when it's unconstitutional and a violation of any oath of anyone in public office. Um, he also said, come on, come on, what else did he say? Oh, he said um, that the reason why we're not winning, quote unquote, or whatever, in Iraq is because the American people don't have enough will to kill the number of people that need to be killed over there. <laughs> it's pretty intense. Huh? <laughs> so he said a lot of interesting things that I don't exactly agree with. He said that for years. Yeah, yeah. And he's not a neocon. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I told him about this incident on. Uh,